What's going on guys and welcome to the next episode of the crack a pack series today We're opening up a pack of 2013 corset uh, Not tons of awesome stuff in terms of value, but we do have a chroma's memorial sitting at the top right around $26 We of course have a ton of planeswalkers the the best one right now is Lillian of the dark realms We have sublime angel uh, vampire nocturnus uh, sitting at nine dollars quite a number of decent cards so we'll do the best we can to pull something really really awesome and of course we're going to do our best to figure out what our pack one pick one will be i am not a very good drafter uh and i didn't actually draft this set at all uh so we'll do the best we can but by all means if you disagree with me please let me know in the comment section below i am perfectly happy having that conversation so We'll kick off the uh, comments here with Bloodhunter Bat. It's a 2-2 for 3 and a black. It has flying, and when it enters the battlefield, target player loses 2 life, and you gain 2 life. Uh, this card's actually perfectly fine, in my opinion. Uh, draining 2 on entry is perfectly fine. It's a 2-2 flyer for 4. Not amazing stats, but that drain kind of... It, it pushes it up to the edge where it's like, okay, this is definitely playable. It's not the most amazing card in the world, but it's definitely a serviceable 4-drop. Uh, so I do like that card. Uh, Titanic Growth, instant for one and a green. Target creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. Pretty straightforward combat trick, a very classic uh, combat trick in, uh, as well. Uh, definitely a playable card as well, but uh, I definitely like the bat more. Uh, especially in a core set, I really like to take as, as many proactive cards as possible, things that affect the board very, very quickly, uh, and then can hopefully stick around. Uh, and so the, the Bloodhunter bat is definitely favored for me in this case. Uh, Archaeomancer, a 1 2 for 2 and 2 blue. When it enters the battlefield, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. This card, uh, definitely a little bit over costed, but you do get to buy back basically any instant or sorcery, which is fantastic. Uh, especially if you have something like a blue black and splashing some removal in there on the black side or something like that, getting double value out of your removal is just fantastic. That being said, I wouldn't necessarily want to pick this card before having the payoffs, so I'd rather have a couple of instants and sorceries that are really, really going to get me there uh, before picking this up first. Uh, so I think for me, I'm still on the bat plan. Uh, Guardians of Ekraza, uh, I might be mispronouncing that. It's a 0-4 for 2 and a white. It has Defender, and it also has Exalted, so whenever a creature you uh, control attacks alone, that creature gets plus 1, plus 1 until the end of the turn. I generally don't like defender cards uh, in draft. I feel like they're just, they don't do enough usually unless you're really drafting sort of a defender archetype, which is definitely a thing in some sets. Uh, but thankfully this does have exalted, which makes this just a little bit more worth it. Again, it's not a favorite of mine, uh, but having exalted definitely buffs up some of your other creatures if you're swinging in and you're not trying to go wide. You just have a couple of really high value creatures. This can just push them over the edge a little bit excuse me uh hopefully win combat in that instance again not a huge fan of this card but not terrible uh merfolk, merfolk excuse me of the pearl trident a uh, 1 1 vanilla creature for one blue this is not a good card uh this is really bad actually uh the only reason you would play this is if you just didn't have anything else uh unfortunately not a card that i'm excited about at all uh blade tusk boar 3-2 for 3 and a red. It has Intimidate, so it can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or creatures that share a color with it. So uh, this was sort of like, I don't want to call it Menace before Menace or anything like that, but it was basically a way to not give something full unblockable, but like kind of close to it. Uh, and so this was actually a serviceable 4-drop. Uh, it's not amazing. Uh, it's obviously a little bit understated uh, at a at 4-drop. Having a 3-2 is not great. Uh, but having Intimidate means it's probably going to punch through some damage, so it's actually worth it in that instance. Uh, again, in a low-to-the-ground kind of red deck win style draft deck, perfectly fine. Uh, but again, I still like the bat, uh, personally. Uh, Essence Scatter, uh, instant for one and a blue, counter-target creature spell. This is great. Uh, draft, obviously, you're going to run into tons and tons of creature spells. Uh, so you can definitely mainboard one or even two of these without any issues at all. Uh, so it's always going to find a one for one target. Obviously you want to do something or, or you want to counter something that's sort of more high impact. So sometimes it's better to wait on that, uh, or wait on this card. But, uh, if you've got one or two of them, that's no problem. You just sit back on it and then it's a hard counter for any creature. So it's actually really good. I'm going to keep it in this file for now. Cause I do like that card quite a lot. 
uh, Walking Corpse. 2-2 two, two for one and a black vanilla creature. Uh, it's just fine. Uh, unfortunately, it's not amazing. Uh, it's just a bear in black. So it's serviceable. You would play it if you had to, but it's not amazing. Uh, Goblin Arsonist, a 1-1 one, one for one red. When it dies, you may have it deal one damage to target creature or player. Uh, this in a red deck is great. Uh, obviously, it's still just a 1-1 one, one for one that's going to deal one damage every once in a while, uh, which is perfectly serviceable in a red deck. I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, you don't want tons of these, obviously, but being able to just throw throw damage at something, uh, if this blocked a 1-2 or something along those lines, you can actually throw that damage on there uh, and then trade up, essentially. Uh, so I do like this card, not more than some of the cards we have already, though. Uh, Bountiful Harvest, a sorcery for four and a green. You gain one life for each land you control. At best, this is a sideboard card against very, very aggro decks. Uh, I do not like cards like this in general, uh, but it is it does have its purpose, which is to gain life and kind of stall the game uh, against some of the really, really fast decks, which some green decks may not be able to deal with very easily. Uh, okay, this is a great card. So, Arctic Aven, uh, a 2-1 two, for 2 and a blue, it has flying. As long as you control a planes, it gets plus 1, plus 1, and then you can pay 1 white and it gains lifelink until end of the turn. Uh, this cycle, I believe there was a cycle of these, I might be wrong, uh, but I believe there was sort of, it, they weren't technically like two color cards in terms of their casting cost was only one color, but they had a buff based off of uh, another color, in this case obviously white. I really like this card, I think it's great. Uh, it's definitely better, I believe, than the two cards we have now, uh, and so, so far that's definitely the pick. Uh, Tormod's Crypt, uh, much more of a constructed card, a zero mana artifact that you can tap and sacrifice and exile all cards from target player's graveyard. Uh, this is something that we see in modern and things like that every once in a while, as it does deal with an entire graveyard for zero mana, which is fantastic. Uh, unfortunately in draft, you just don't ever really, I, I say ever, you very rarely need to do that. Uh, you're not going to be running up against a ton of reanimator strategies or anything like that. Uh, and so Tormod Script, at best, is a very, very occasional sideboard card. Uh, unfortunately, just not worth it. Uh, rewind, two and two blue for an instant, counter target spell, and then untap up to four lands. This is very, very good in draft. Uh, four mana counters, yes, a little behind the eight ball, but uh, draft is going to be a little bit slower. So you're going to be able to counter hopefully something big uh, by turn four and be able to tap, or, or excuse me, untap those four lands and follow it up with hopefully some other instant, maybe it's another counter, maybe it's a draw spell, something along those lines. So I do like this card. Um, I am going to put it in this pile for now, but I'm not sure uh, what I will pick. Our rare here is Stormtide Leviathan, 5 and 3 blue for an 8-8. Eight, eight. It has island walk, so it's unblockable as long as the, con the defending player controls an island. All lands are islands in addition to their other types, uh, and creatures without flying or island walk can't attack. Uh, this is an interesting card. I feel like this is probably the pick, uh, because it is just a big 8-8 eight, eight bomb, uh, which is great. Uh, blue seems really, really good in this pack, uh, but it is a big 8-8 eight, eight bomb, and that's going to take some time to get to. Uh, so I think I'd probably pick that. Uh, but that being said, Rewind, Arctic Aven, both really, really good considerations. Uh, there are a lot of actually pretty good options in this pack, but I do think I'd go with the Leviathan. Uh, by all means, let me know if that seems incorrect in the comment section below. Uh, and as always, please make sure to like and uh, subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Cracker Pack video.